Hey guys, welcome to Studio 2 Magic. My name is Shane, and in last week's video, we made an old style ghost by throwing a sheet over a person in a green screen suit. We erased the green suit and was left with just the floating ghost. Well, in today's video, we're going to do the same effect, except we're going to use Rotobrush 2.0 in After Effects. With this method, you wouldn't even need to wear a green screen suit, but it is best to wear pants, that is, pants that are a very different color than the sheet, so that the roto brush can separate the sheet from the pants. You can apply the information from today's tutorial and last week's tutorial to a lot of other similar type of effects. So check it out and see how you might apply these techniques to other effects. Or just make a sheety ghost. That is, a ghost made out of a sheet. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in After Effects. So I have two video layers here. One is a background. If I, if I solo that, you can see it's just the background. And the other layer is video of our ghost running down the street, which is actually just me in a green screen suit running down the street in the middle of the night. But what we're going to do is instead of keying the green legs out, we're going to use Rotobrush 2.0 to just select the white sheet material. I am going to go ahead and rename my two layers. I'm going to name the bottom layer to background. And my top layer, I'm going to rename it to ghost layer. So what I need to do is take my ghost layer and double click it. And that opens it up here in this layer view. And if I zoom in just a little bit here, I want to go to this roto brush tool and select it to roto brush tool. And then I can start drawing by just left clicking in there and selecting areas, select some of the sheet here. And once I get all of the sheet selected, I can see right here, it selected a little section that I don't want. And if I hold down the alt button and then while holding it left click, I can just kind of select it and it will deselect that area. I'm going to switch this quality from standard to best. And then I'm going to hit the space bar and let it start going through the footage. Okay, I just stopped it because I see a little area here that it selected some of the foot that it shouldn't have. Um, I can use page up and page down to step through my footage forward and backwards, or I can just click these buttons. But I'm going to use page up to step back one. That looks good, so if I put page down, I can, I can use the alt button and just deselect that part of the green suit that it got. And then go ahead and hit spacebar and let it continue. Okay, I can see another area here that's starting to drift off the sheet. So I'm just gonna use page up and page down to step through this and continue to fix that. And um, I'm just gonna step through all this footage and continue to do this until I get through all of it and I'm finished. Okay, and when it's completed going through the footage and outlining the sheet, you can hit the freeze button and this will take a little while. Now with this layer frozen, I can go back to the composition layer and we just see the ghost over the background. I can turn off the background and you'll see it's just the ghost layer. I could take my ghost layer and use Red Giant's shadow effect. Just drag that in, move it into position at about where the ground level would be and then just drag a shadow into place. Set the softness up quite a bit and the opacity, run that quite a bit down. But I'm gonna do that this a different way and show you how that can be done. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that shadow. I'm gonna take my ghost layer and hit Control D to duplicate it. Take that duplicated layer, rename it to ghost layer shadow. And I want to change that to a 3D layer by clicking this box. I want to move the anchor point to about the ground level under the sheet. So I'm going to use this pan behind, which moves the anchor point. Go ahead and drag the anchor point down, down to about there. And I'm going to hit R to open up rotation. And I'm going to rotate it forward to where it's flat on the ground. And then I'm going to use Z to rotate it off to the side. But I also want it to be black and look like a shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in a curves effect and just bring this top highlighted point down all the way. And then I'm going to hit T to open up the opacity and um, turn it down to almost nothing. I will go with 10. But I also want a little, it's a little too sharp. So I want to drag in a, 
a blur effect. So I'm just gonna drag in a Gaussian blur to the bottom here and run that up a little bit. Now that I've got that shadow looking pretty good, I'm gonna go to the very first frame and I'm gonna go to my shadow layer and I'm going to hit P for position and I'm going to hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe and then I'm going to go to the last frame and move the position kind of down here under the sheet again, probably kind of off frame. And that way it will move with the sheet as it floats down the street. But I want a second shadow on this other side. So I'm just gonna take my ghost layer, hit Control D to duplicate that. And on sh shadow two, I'm gonna hit R to open up my rotation. And on the Z rotation, I'm just gonna spin it to the other side. Maybe not make it too symmetrical. And actually I'm gonna take the position and lower it down just a little bit more too. Something like that. So now I have a couple shadows created to kind of fake this effect. And I can render that out and take a look and see how it looks doing this version without the green screen suit. So here we have a ghost running down the street using Rotobrush 2.0. And since I'm using Rotobrush 2.0 to create this effect, I can actually move the ghost anywhere on the screen I want. I can go ahead and have him just fly out of the top of the screen. I just have to make sure to move the shadows accordingly. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Please hit that subscribe button to help us grow this channel and we will see you in next week's video.